This Nintendo Switch has seen better days. It is missing the kickstand and no longer reads game cartridges. Starting on the back, there's one teeny tiny Phillips screw hidden under the kickstand. Then there are four large tri-wing screws on the back panel. These make the iPhones look microscopic by comparison. Once the four of those have been removed, we can move over to the side rails. There are five larger Phillips heads inside the Joy-Con rails. We only need to remove the middle ones from both sides. One Phillips head screw is at the top of the device. This one is usually stripped pretty badly. Normally, you would find two additional small Phillips at the bottom of the device. It appears these fell out some time ago. They are also easily stripped. With the necessary screws removed, I'll remove the back panel and keeping it rigid as it can be cracked if bent too far. Now there are a few more Phillips screws to remove around the metal shielding. One holds the micro SD card reader in place. With the screw removed, I can lift it straight up and out of the device, disconnecting the Lego style connection below the foam. After lifting the shield off, we'll find a disgusting pink lump of thermal compound that you'll now notice is on the back of the shield and probably your hands as well. Three Phillips screws hold in the copper heat pipe and heat sink. I can lift it up and away from the frame. Before going any further, it's time to disconnect the battery. Sliding a plastic spudger below the white plastic will safely detach it. Back up to the game card reader, we've got one large ZIF connector holding down a ribbon cable. I'll unlatch it and then disconnect the Lego style one to the right. Now three Phillips stand between this card reader and Freedom. Two hold in a plastic support over the headphone jack, commonly abused port. With the board disconnected, I'll slowly lift it up straight so as not to twist the ribbon connector on the left. It should safely slide out. Let's see what game we'll be playing later. Oh, it looks like Minecraft today. Grabbing my replacement game card reader with assembly, no soldering needed here, I'll go in reverse order, carefully connecting the ribbon cable into the ZIF connector and latching it down. Then I'll plug in the LEGO connector to the side. I like this connector a lot as it has the plug outlined on the top so you can guide it easily to the board. The three Phillips screws and the plastic headphone jack supporter are reinstalled before placing the heatsink back down. There is more than enough thermal compound remaining, at least to test the device. Reconnecting the battery, I'll hold the power button and watch for a faint purple glow of the LCD through a hole on the left side. As long as everything is working, we can reassemble and play on. Under normal circumstances, the repair is now complete. Go in reverse order to reassemble or stick around to see why my repair was not complete. Oh boy, here we go. This is what I've been waiting for. Some quality Minecraft time. Just gonna build a house, maybe a farm, and... We have a problem. There will be no Minecraft for me. Time to investigate under the microscope. Ah yes, there it is. Five of our gold connectors have broken off the Lego style connector I was just giving such praise. Where could they have gone? Oh, there they are, right where they arguably should be. I'll carefully tweeze these pins out of the connection and move to plan B. I don't have another replacement board with cartridge reader, but I do have another cartridge reader, and with any luck the original board will be good, but the cartridge reader bad. I'll desolder the broken one from the PCB. I'll grab the replacement reader and align it over the solder points on the back side. Adding a small line of flux to help the solder flow over the pins smoothly. Then applying pressure to the top of the reader with some tweezers. I'll press down each pin with the soldering iron to attach them to the PCB. Once connected, I'll use those tweezers to lightly 
apply pressure to each pin. If they budge or wiggle, I'll now have to go back over those pins with the iron. These seem solidly attached, so I'll begin reinstalling this to the main housing. With everything reassembled, it's finally time to play Minecraft. The card reader is reading games perfectly. The game is ready to start. Wait, I have just been informed that the customer did not drop off the controllers. There will be no Minecraft today, after all. But the device is repaired and ready to be picked up. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.